we are going to continue with this true crime case, this unfortunately ever-growing case in America. It is called squatting. There are two types of house squatting that's going on in America. In fact, if you uh, look up this topic of squatters in YouTube, you're going to come up with a lot of uh, different cases that are happening all around our country. And so it can either be uh, the case where you have left your house for an extended period of time, nobody's living in your house, and then you come back to your house and like somebody's living in it, like strangers are living in it and claiming it as their own, okay? So it can be that kind of house squatting. And we looked at that kind uh, in part one. But today we're gonna look at the second kind, this is part two. And the second kind of house squatting is when you have a guest come and stay at your house and then they actually end up taking over your house. For instance, there was this lady in Austin, Texas, and a man came up and approached her, came to her front door, and offered to do some yard work for her. And she took him up on it, did some yard work, and then one thing led to another. Um, uh, one day he was out working and then he was saying he was about to faint and then uh, he, she said, oh, you know, she invited him into her house, uh, gave him drink, all this. He was laid out on her couch and then it became one thing after another. He started living in the guest room and the owner, homeowner, was trying to get him out and he, they, she had to go through legal means to do it. It wasn't an easy thing. It was a nightmare for her. And this took months and months and months for her to resolve. This became a legal nightmare. And so today's true crime case, we're gonna be centered on this type of house squatting. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the definition of a squatter. And I'm gonna put this on the screen. This is the definition that comes from the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. This is actually the first dictionary that was um, printed in the U.S. in the year 1828, and there's two definitions. The first definition of squatter is one that squats or sits close. The second definition, it says, in the U.S., one that settles on new land without a title. So let's take a look at the definition from today's dictionary of squatter. It is a person who unlawfully occupies an uninhabited building or unused land. A squatter lives on a property to which they have no title, right, or lease. And so you can see there's a big difference between these definitions, right? I mean, in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, it, this was during a time in America in which all the frontiers were exploring new land and a lot of it was you know it was brand new and so that's the definition one that settles on new land without a title and so with today's definition it's very different right it's people who are living in someone else's house that's already owned it already has a title to it right and so you can see that this is a new sin right? This is not a sin that they battled with in 1828, but it's a sin that we're battling with now, today, in today's culture. And so you may be thinking, well, Jennifer, does the Bible even address this kind of sin? I mean, it wasn't even included in the dictionary, Webster's 1828 dictionary. And my answer is yes. That is why the Bible stands the test of time. Because in God's Word, there are so many relevant true crime topics that are still faced in different generations, different cultures, and squatting is actually in the Bible. And we're going to take a look at this true crime case. It is in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 37. And 2 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. 
and we took a look took a look at this case last time uh, of a different squatting incident and we're not going to take a look at that one here today um, we're going to take a look at a different one and this is a this was an incident that could have been a nightmare okay here we have the Shunammite woman we're not given her name we're just given that she is from the town of Shunam S-H-U-N-E-M and she is a very godly lady a very wealthy lady she has a very big house she has a lot of lot of land and um, she becomes friends uh, with this stranger uh, this stranger his name is Elisha and he's a prophet and she actually opens up a room for him in fact she designates she has a room blocked off for him on her rooftop and she has this for Elisha anytime he comes through town uh, he can stay there uh, anytime rent free and it's a it's a wonderful wonderful room and he, he has access to that anytime he wants and so how could this Shunammite woman still display this hospitality and not fall victim to what could have been a house squatter I mean this her hospitality could have resulted in this being a nightmare for her okay uh, this could have been a legal headache that would be a nightmare to resolve well the reason that this hospitality was so successful and she did not fall victim to being a victim of a house squatter is that she had some safeguards in place she had some safeguards in place I don't know if you have watched the Netflix documentary, The Worst Roommate Ever, um, but there are, there are stories that have happened to people who have opened up a room in their house and it turned out to be a nightmare for them, a legal nightmare. And so uh, I want to really address this uh, issue, this true crime issue, and um, because it's in the Bible and it shows relevancy today. So today we're gonna to look at four Shunammite safeguards against squatters. Number one, when you read her story, okay, you're gonna read that this host, she works in stages, okay? Now, you have to remember, Elisha started off as a stranger, okay? She knew that Elisha was a prophet, was a man of God, right? But just because someone says that they are a man of God, they need to kind of prove that in your, in your life, right? They need to kind of show some actions, right? You can't just take someone for, you know, what they're saying is, you know, 100% truth, right? They have to kind of prove that. And so she's doing that in this, in this situation. She works in stages. When she first meets him, she doesn't like, oh, I'm, out of, I'm, I'm gonna open up this room for you. Oh, this is yours anytime you want. No, no. She works in stages. This is in 2 Kings chapter four, verses eight through 10. What she does is she first, she invites him over for a meal, okay? Uh, with her, her husband, and um, and this, this meal is, they have a, they have a great time. It's a wonderful connection, right? And she ends up doing this over and over repeatedly, having him over for a meal. And then it builds up to this, where she's going to be very generous, very hospitable, right? And she's like opening up um, a room for him, just for him on the top of her house. And so she works in stages. Number two, the host is offering the hospitality. The host, the host is offering the hospitality. It's not the stranger is not asking for the hospitality. The stranger's not coming up and asking, oh, can I, 
you know, tend to your land or, or oh, can I, you know, do this for you? Oh, can I do this? This is being initiated by the host. And I think that's very important. Okay. Um, the host is calling the shots. Okay. This is the host's house, right? So the host is calling the shots. We see this in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. This is when, um, you know, she's initiating, come over for a meal, and it builds up to, she has got this room, this magnificent room. It's like, it's like Elisha has got his own uh, penthouse suite at the Hilton. And he can stay there um, free. Free. Anytime he's traveling through, okay, and and she gives him this. She, you know, yeah, this is yours. Enjoy it. And it tells all in the scripture, all in those verses, uh, that she's got a setup for him: a bed, a table, a stool, a candlestick, everything that he could possibly need. And it's on the rooftop. It's just, it's like a penthouse. It's like a penthouse apartment. Okay, and he's got that anytime he's coming through there. So she's offering that, okay? It's not, you know, he's coming up and asking her, and she's offering that. All right, number three. The stranger honors the host boundaries. The stranger honors the host boundaries. This is displayed in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Anytime Elisha is coming to stay with her, he always, he doesn't, he honors those boundaries. He doesn't abuse them, okay? When he says he's coming and then when he says he leaves, that's what he's doing, okay? He's not moving in there and taking over. Uh, he's not demanding, oh, you know, there's another part of the house that's even prettier or whatever or another part of the land that you've got this other little house on. Oh, could I stay there? No. The stranger, Elisha, he is constantly honoring the host boundaries. And he doesn't ever abuse that. All right. Number four, the fourth safeguard. The stranger shows the appreciation by words and acts of service. This is displayed in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 12 through 17, and chapter 4, verses 25 through 37. Elisha is so appreciative of what this host, this Shunammite woman, has done for him. He's very appreciative. And there are uh, some really serious issues that come up in the Shunammite woman's life, and he is there for her, you know? Uh, he shows his appreciation by showing up, by being there. Uh, she has a uh, son who died, and Elisha came and helped uh, her out of the situation, actually performed a miracle, brought the son back to life. Elisha forewarned this Shunammite woman that famine was coming to her land, and that she needs to flee, to leave. And when this Shunammite woman returned seven years later, this is what the other um, part one was about, uh, that she had house squatters. And uh, Elisha was instrumental in helping her in that situation. So we're talking about the Shunammite woman had went through some serious curveballs of life. And Elisha had a lot to do with um, how she navigated those and how she was able to keep moving forward and not spiraling down in her life. So those are the four safeguards of the Shunammite woman. And this is actually a beautiful picture of a host, what started out to be a host and a stranger, and it turned out to be a friend and a friend who continually gave to each other were there for each other in the darkest periods of their life. So don't fall victim to being a victim of house squatters. Uh, implement those 
four Shunammite safeguards against house squatting squatters. Number one, the host works in stages. Number two, the host is offering the hospitality. Number three, the stranger honors the host boundaries. And number four, the stranger shows the appreciation by words and acts of service. That is my spiritual food for you to munch on the rest of the week. I can't wait to see you next time.